Hey guys, this is my new super awesome cooling system. It's um, so staggeringly simple, you won't believe it. Now the reason that I'm showing you like a full blown one, already built and not doing it in my usual let's play style and showing you how to build it, is because on yesterday's live stream, I showed off this contraption, which whilst it's staggeringly clever and Apart from the pipe layout, which um, which is integral to the to the cleverness of the design, um, is uh, is very simple and very straightforward. Uh, it uses it uses no automation. Uh, it, it, these these bits of automation here are, are actually irrelevant. Uh, the problem is once I once I thought about it a bit more, I realised that this is actually incredibly inefficient, and that is because if you if you pass uh, packets of water into an aqua tuner uh, with gaps in between. The aqua tuner actually runs and draws power for two ticks instead of just one tick. And that's a problem because it means that I'm only getting half the efficiency for the power that I'm putting in. If you want to know more about this, watch the uh, the live stream. Um, that's up on my up on my channel. You can see the live stream. You can see exactly how this works and why it works and the whole methodology behind it but once I realized my hideous error I thought you know what I need to come up with a new one and I need to tell the guys so people don't go and build this because it's hideously hideously inefficient so let's get back to the other one okay so let's take a look at this little beauty and see exactly how it works so this is based on uh, base cooling. So the idea is that you're circulating water throughout your base and then you want to cool that water down. Now using water as a, as a coolant uh, and piping it around your base is an awesome way to keep your base nice and cool. The problem is having taken all that heat out of your base how do you then cool it down? You want a nice easy consistent solution that just works and this just works. So, let's take a look. So I am pumping um, warm water in, although it's, it's not that warm. <laughs> look at this. Uh, but I'm, I'm pumping in a continuous supply of 10 kilograms of water. Right, now for efficiency, you wanna be pumping in ideally 10 kilograms of water so that uh, you're getting the maximum efficiency out of the aqua tuner. Because the, the aqua tuner uses maximum power uh, and it's maximum power, let's go to the power view, it uses up 1200 watts regardless of how much water you're pumping through it, right? So it doesn't matter whether these packets of water are 10 kilograms or one kilogram, this will still use up 1200 watts. So ideally you want to be using the maximum water which is uh, 10 kilo kilograms per second. So what do we do? Well, I'm running the, um, the water through some radiant pipes, which I'm running around the steam turbine. And the idea of, of that is to, is to, uh, is to preheat this water a little bit and, and cool down the steam turbine. And you can see that this is running at a very, very comfortable 25 degrees. Now steam turbines have to be kept below 100 degrees. If, you, if it gets over 100 degrees, it'll stop working. Okay, so having, having cooled down or pre-cooled the, um, the steam turbine, our water just gets pumped. I've got a liquid valve in here, but I'm not using it. You can use this to throttle um, your, your water going into here if you need to, but I haven't actually needed to use it at all. And in theory, you don't need to use it at all. So the water comes in, goes into the aqua tuner, heats up the aqua tuner, gets cooled down by 14 degrees, comes out and you can see this is coming out very very cool and that just gets dumped out into our reservoir into our main reservoir right and it's it's that simple so what about all of this in here how's this working uh, I'll point out there is zero automation there is zero in terms of gases there's nothing being done with gases there's nothing being done with automation the only thing 
that, that is running this is just the liquid piping. That's it. And that's why I say that this is like the best cooling system. Now, the best is obviously a subjective term. Uh, and it's the best mid-game because obviously when you get into the end game, you get more advanced materials which can make this much more uh, efficient in theory. So, uh, so for, for mid-game, the reason I'm saying the best, I'm taking into consideration the how simple it is, how easy it is to build, and it is staggeringly easy to build. Literally, you build this containment, put in the um, put in the aqua tuna, bit of piping, put in some temp shift plates, fill this up with two tiles full of crude oil. This is the crude oil, and I'll, I'll explain why I'm using crude oil here. Then you want um, just over a tile full of water. So you want to fill up these tiles and have a little bit of water in these this top row of tiles. Then put your steam turbine on top so you won't have any other gases in here. Then just let it run and just let it heat up. And when it reaches equilibrium, and this is at equilibrium now, we'll be running uh, our aqua tuna. You can see it's kind of bouncing around between about 142 and 153 ish but you'll see the crude oil is um it seems to settle at equilibrium if you're if you're supplying constantly 10 kilograms of water to be cooled uh it settles at around 142 degrees which is well within the thermal limit of the aqua tuna which will start taking damage at 175 degrees. So we are well, well within the thermal limits of the system. So why am I using crude oil? Okay. It's the, it's the properties of crude oil that make this kind of work very, very well. It has a, a really high thermal conductivity. It's got a thermal conductivity of two, right? Now you compare that to water, for example. Water has a thermal conductivity of only 0.6. So this is, uh, what, over three times more conductive. And the issue is getting the heat out of the crude oil and into the steam. Right? And if you look, if you like look at, uh, right at the top here, that's 140.3. And, the, and the, uh, the crude oil is only 140. It's, it's trying to tick up to 142. So let's call it 142. So there's only a two degree temperature difference between the crude oil and the steam and the way we achieve that is a combination of um, the the thermal conductivity uh, of the of the crude oil so that is transferring heat uh, very rapidly and then we're using these um, these copper temp shift plates so again I'm not using anything any staggeringly advanced materials this is just copper this has got a thermal conductivity of 60 so that's going to be dragging the heat uh, out of the crude oil and transferring it to the steam. Now these, uh, these temp shift plates operate in a, in a nine square radius. So these are transferring the heat, not just to these tiles, but also to these tiles up here. And that's why we're keeping this very, very, con uh, very consistent um, temperature gradient from the, uh, from the crude oil all the way up to the top of the steam. So, and, and that's pretty much it. So what happens? We, um, we have the, 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 the heat being transferred into the crude oil. That, that is transferred into the steam. Over 125 degrees, the steam turbine will start sucking in the steam. And it converts the, the, the heat that's in the steam to, uh, to electricity, to energy. And this is currently producing... And it's not telling me. If I mouse over it, it'll tell me. It's currently producing 366 watts of power, which is pretty nice. And it's always producing that. This is this is completely at equilibrium now. And you can see that the, the, the temperature down here isn't going up and down. It's not fluctuating at all. So this is going to carry on running and keep producing 366, 367 watts of power uh, consistently. So what happens? The the steam gets sucked into the steam turbine, and then we take the heat, convert it to electricity. 
the electricity. Um, now, obviously, you'd want this kind of like properly hooked up to your to your power grid. Um, I've just I've just attached it to this circuit for for, for ease of showing this off, um, and I've thrown I've just thrown a battery on there. Like what the hell? So um, you can see that this is just transmitting that power into the power grid, and then the the steam is converted to water, and then the water is just pumped back out here. Now each one of these uh, is each one of these vents sucks in I think it's four kilograms of water per second so uh, no it's is it point four kilograms and so you put times five gives us two thousand grams of water coming out so yeah that's right so um, so yeah we get two thousand grams of water coming out consistently at 95 degrees C that gets piped into here and instantly gets converted back to steam so we don't have any over pressurization issues we, we've got, let's see, we've got just over just over 500 kilograms of steam per tile, which is just over one row of water. So when you initially put it in, you just fill it slightly over so that there's no gas left in the system. And then when the water sufficiently heats up, turns converts to steam, and you end up with about 550 kilograms of steam per, per cell. So <clears throat> that gets converted into steam powers the steam turbine and that is how we delete the heat from the system because that heat is getting converted into electricity and that means that we can have water flowing around our base constantly um, and constantly being cooled and this is cooling this water down 14 degrees so we're, the, the water's coming in at between 14 and 16 degrees and going out at between 0.6 and two degrees it's pretty awesome and in fact now that I've been running this for a while uh, my base is actually getting like too cool I actually need to pick up more heat uh, to avoid my water getting so cold that it freezes now you will want to put a little bit of automation around this um, well potentially I mean it may not be needed but you might want to do it so you might want to put in something like this mechanism that I was using in my uh, in my old AquaTuner, which um, what this does is it limits the temperature of the water that's being passed into the cooling system. So you want to make sure that this water is not below, say, 14 degrees. Which this water, some of this water is below uh, 14 degrees. So yeah, so you want to make sure the water's not below 14 degrees so that you don't uh, you don't freeze your pipes up. And what else? I mean, there really isn't anything else to it. Uh, if you don't want to be pumping so much water in, then you can just throttle it with a liquid valve and reduce the reduce the flow of water in here. Um, and yeah, other than that, there the, the really isn't too much to it. You can put this basically anywhere. It's pretty small. How big is it? Let's take a look. This is like the whole thing is 9 by 10. So it's not a big thing. You can put it literally anywhere. And if you decide that that is not enough cooling for you, then of course you can add a second one. Or if you wanted to, you could have um, two aqua tuners and uh, two steam turbines on top. You could combine two into one. Or you could have um, separate ones. So there you go that is my ultimate mid-game cooling solution and i don't know about you but i think that that is pretty simple really easy to build i'll just run through so all you've got to worry about is power and uh, there's no gas just plumbing no automation couldn't be simpler so all you got to do is find yourself some uh, find yourself some crude oil research up to getting steam turbines boom you're done all right guys uh, we're gonna leave it there if you want to see if you want to see me actually construct this then um, if you if you watch my regular let's play series I will be constructing this but I've got to dig down and get crude oil from down here I actually had to use the debug tool 
to give me some uh, some crude oil. But I wanted to show you this uh, very rapidly after the live stream because I didn't want anybody building that other monstrosity because um, it's so inefficient. It's clever, but it's really inefficient. This thing is staggeringly efficient. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. I hope you like this. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments on this, and I will catch you for the next one. Peace out.